Welcome to the Insomnia Project. Sit back, relax, and listen as we have a hopefully calm conversation about the mundane. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Marco Timpano. I'm Amanda. And Amanda, I should uh, just let any list, new listeners know that this is a conversation that we have that is very mundane. We're not going to talk about anything you know, that might be a little bit upsetting or triggering or whatnot. We're just going to have a calm conversation. Mm-hmm. In our last episode, we were in Panama, and yeah. now we're back home. Now we're back. And it was a nice trip. You know, a nice trip is always followed by an uneventful uneventful flight home. Flight yeah, it home. was a really nice trip. Mm-hmm. It was. It, it almost feels like a little bit of a dream. True. Yeah, True. we were talking about dreams today. Yeah, we were. Yeah, it, it kind of just felt like this moment in time that happened, and it felt it felt long enough, mm-hmm. which not all vacations do. But that one, I don't I don't think there was much more. We would have had to really gone exploring. True, and that would have been a different experience than the one we wanted. So, yeah, I think uh, I think it was what what was needed in that moment. And now we're back. And we're back. I'm cold, though. I know it's cold today in the studio. Yeah, it's just cold in In general. In general, where we are. I hope wherever you are, it's night. You're warm and toasty as Mm -hmm. you listen to this. Mm -hmm. I need to take some some ornaments off the outside tree. I'm going to do that later today. Um, it might sound silly that we have ornaments on our tree, but it's... And it's March. And it's March, but they're... They're bluey, silvery ornaments, and they just kind of jazz up the tree a yeah. bit, so... They're not so they're Christmassy. Not, yeah, they're not so Christmassy, but that's it. They're going... That's... They've lived their life, their best life, as the kids say, and uh, they'll they'll go on to, uh, to the compost, there I think, or the recycling, I think. I think they're glass, so we can recycle them. I think so. Speaking of trees, I want to talk about an incident that happened a few years back. Oh, gosh. Okay. Okay. So we have two money trees Mm. and you're supposed to gift a money tree. So you're not supposedly, you're not supposed to ever purchase your own money tree. So you bought one for me and and I buy one for you. Right. And they're supposed to be like a great tree to help bring money into your life. Right. Mm -hmm. Something like that. So Amanda's tree, we put them out in the summertime, but I I brought it out from the summer or the fall a little late. Mm -hmm. And when I did that, all the leaves from the money tree. Leaves? Leaves. Oh, I said leaves, didn't I? Yeah, like the hockey team. Yeah, no, sorry. Uh, You can tell I'm from Toronto because I said leaves. Um, All the leaves had fallen and it was just a really long, thin stick. Mm -hmm. And Amanda was a little bit upset. I was devastated. It was quite... Because often when you see money trees, it's just like a little house plant, you know, something that you can put on on a table or something. But this was actually, we had had it, I mean, now we've had it like seven years. So we, at that point, had had it a good four or five years. And it's about six feet tall, I should mention. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a tree. Yeah. And so it had lived this, you know, and... I'm sure it's much bigger than when we first got it. So to, we've watched it grow. We've had it outside. We've fostered it. And, you know, we've really cared. I mean, not that we've taken great care. We water it. That's about it. But um, so then that one day in October when it was just a little colder and then it just, yeah, everything fell off of it. And so I th- it was I think three I, sticks. I think I had it in the house. And then you're like, the weather's so nice. No, Let's keep it out. That's No, that's not what happened. Okay. Well, I remember it being outside (laughs) longer than it should have been. Um, Okay. So I remember you were upset and I said, I think I can revive the tree. So I went online. I didn't believe it. I thought it was done. I went online and I looked what to do. And they said, if you have a humidifier, have the steam not too hot on the tree. Now the tree is six feet tall. So I basically moved the humidifier every, say, four hours. I think it's important to say that this humidifier that you're talking about is one that has one of those long spouts at the top. So it has a fairly... Um, long reach? Yeah, and also like po- like humidifiers when I was a kid were just a sort of block in the corner. Right. But this is like long, so you could actually target a very specific area. True, true. And so I would move the humidifier up and down the stick which was formerly a tree with leaves on it. Every few hours, yeah. you would move it. 
And I did that for days, hoping I could revive the tree so you wouldn't be so upset. And, and? after about a week, as a money tree does, it sprouts a little a tiny... little tiny sprout. It almost looks like a little hand forming. Yeah. And then those fingers become like a leaf mm -hmm. or like a set of leaves. And um, now the tree is really living its best life, having a good time, nice and full. Yeah, it came back leaf by leaf, little sprout by sprout. And now it's back to its pretty much former glory. Mm -hmm. And it's even taller now. I mean, it's not it's still in the six feet range. But, right. And the one that I bought for you had a bit of a rough patch. It, uh, I don't know why, maybe it didn't get enough sunlight where we had it in the living room. It just... It did okay. It was one of those plants that you're like, you're just plowing through life, and this is what you've got to give. Then I moved it. Yeah. And I and I took better care of it. And, and now. And now it's like, yes. I feel is. like it's getting a new beginning. The reason I mentioned the money tree is that we just we just had brunch with our friend, and Dale said to me, now is a good time to put those uh, fertilizer sticks in your potted plants. Oh. You know what she did? one year um might be too much information but something she told me okay is i know scandalous ch plant talk but she actually i also like that you're <laughs> we've named who it is we're talking about so <laughs> by proxy she might oh no well maybe i shouldn't mention it well now, now you kind of yeah. have to well anyway a thing you can do and this is one of this filed this under my informative tips okay although i've never i've never uh looked this up or anything she said you can take old expired or not expired whatever if you're getting rid of it birth control and put it in pills the right yeah yeah well not an iud like. well i'm just saying <laughs> <laughs> yes i'm talking about oral contraceptives are meant to be anyway put them in the soil and that the estrogen, I think, will uh, go great lengths to help the plant out in the soil of the pot. But I almost wonder if that's, I don't know. She said that's something that was recommended, and she did it, and it really made her plants go strong. So there you go. I'm just going to say, as, as I should say more often, any advice we give <laughs> on this particular podcast should be taken with the largest grain of salt and, and is not recommended. Um, speak to your... Uh, doctor, dentist, or your, your botanist, botanist, your local neighborhood botanist. Bef before you do anything that we... I know. That's why I was like, oh, no, am I going to share this one? Well, I've shared it. You've shared it. It's Listen, there. Listen, it's anecdotally something that I heard about. Fair enough. Fair enough. I asked her about the Monstera I gave her, and she said it's it's doing right really well. And Dale was the one who said that Monsteras can be very finicky, mm -hmm. and they don't grow everywhere. See, but she knows her plants. She does. I need to have an episode of Dale talking plant talk. Yeah. And uh, we um, we gave Dale since it's now we're on we're in a section of the conversation known as Dale and her plants. We gave Dale what we thought was a clipping of a pineapple plant. Oh, this is the best story. Well, I don't. Now we've really oversold sorry, it. I sorry. think. Uh, I don't know if it's the best story. It is a story. So sure. we got this pineapple plant originally for your mother. Yes. Um, and she had it on her table for months, I think. She was trying to sell her home, and I had heard pineapples are What was she trying to sell? Home. <laughs> Sorry, how do you say that word? H-O-M-E. I'm trying not to be too energetic because I've gotten some feedback. She's uh, trying to sell her home. <laughs> and... And this is exactly what people point out. I'm not these laughing. Moments. Okay, and I was I read that pineapples were a good thing for the home, and well, pineapples are traditionally a symbol of hospitality, right. right? We learned that when we were in Savannah, Georgia. So I thought that this pineapple in our home would help her sell the house. Mm -hmm. And yeah, back back in the 1800s, you would and and past that, it was a gift. The um, the guest would bring if somebody was visiting the home staying for a few days you'd bring the pineapple because it was a sign of affluence and wealth and abundance sure because pineapples weren't so easily grown and I think it's only like one pineapple a plant at a time it's not like an apple tree or something so 
anyway, you'd bring the pineapple, and the pe- the people that own the house would put it on the hearth, on the mantle, right. rather, to show off, look at this beautiful pineapple that was brought to us. And then I think they'd eat it last day or something. Supposedly, by the, by the time the pineapple was gnarly and no good anymore, the guests should have left. Oh, right. That's right. They did mm-hmm. say that. Yeah. Like, w- when you outstay your welcome, the pineapple outstays its... It's expected ripeness in life. Right. So that's was the thinking when you bought this little pineapple plant, uh, more of a miniature pineapple plant than Definitely. something you'd see, like something that could fit in a pot the, on a table. The pineapple was on the plant. It was the size of a golf ball, just yeah. to give you a sort of totally. indication of, of how big it was. Well, your mother never watered it because she thought it was fake. She, she had never seen a pineapple that small, and she thought, I brought her a fake plant. Why well, would bring her this Huh? Weird, she didn't ask, and weird. she was in the middle of doing a lot of other things and True. selling her house. So there it stayed on the table, and she did sell her home, so that worked. And when she went to clear everything out, I think she handed you the plant, said, you bought this, you can have it. So we had this pineapple plant. The pineapple itself, the little golf ball pineapple, kind of came and went, and we found a window for it, and then it lived and lived and then started to do very well. And I think, truthfully, I should have repotted it, but I kind of just left it. And uh, Sometimes you just don't have time to repot. So then I think I took some and tried to repot. I don't remember really what happened, but I had been taking a little – it had some babies or pups, as they're called in the plant world. And so I had put a bunch in some little tiny pots, the kind you would do to to start your tomatoes or peppers, that kind of thing. And I had a few others of a few other plants, I guess. I don't really remember, but I thought I just had the pineapple. So I handed Dale one of these and said, this is a pineapple plant. See what you can do with it. Mine is not so great right now. And I think I handed her a few things. Well, she grew this plant into from this something that was the size of my thumb into something that took up an entire pot and then took up a bigger pot and a bigger pot to the point that it was in the corner of a room, perched on a stool, and went up to the ceiling. Like it's... A huge plant. So huge. And she said, you know, I've been trying to... It just loves... It gets a lot of sunlight in this corner, and it just loves it there, and I have barely done anything. It just loves it. And so then she started to try and trade or sell, I think trade, pieces of it because she had lots of pups. pups. Nobody wanted any. And she's like, but it's a pineapple plant. People must, you know, that's a little bit more rare. And everyone was like, not interested, not interested. So finally she said, well, I'm going to cut you some and I'm going to bring you some because I said, I'm mine's done. I don't have it anymore. So she brings it to me. It's a spider plant. <laughs> it's a, It's just a very common spider plant it is definitely not a pineapple plant and I think what it was was I had done a bunch of pineapple plants and I think I had done one that was actually just a pup of a spider plant that I threw in some soil and that's what I ended up giving her so here she is telling everyone she has not that a pineapple plant is rare but it's a little more rare than your common spider plant to have in a home and to have that big and she said there's no pineapples growing from it and I thought well who knows give it time (laughs) and then I saw it and I was like that's not a pineapple plant plant. So for two years of her life, she thought she was growing this gorgeous tropical plant, which I suppose the spider plant can be tropical. It's not even the interesting thing about this spider plant is it's not even a particularly beautiful spider plant. In it's that it, not the white and green. No, it's, it's just, just green. It's just a green mound of leaves, <laughs> which in its own right is really pretty, but yeah. it's it's a very ordinary looking plant. It just happens to love where Dale has it and the love that Dale gives it, I guess. And it is living a beautiful life, but not as a pineapple plant. No, it's true. Because it knew it was a spider plant all along. It's Dale's birthday coming up. Can we get her a pineapple plant? This is a wonderful suggestion. A wonderful suggestion. Hopefully she won't be listening because not only have we thrown her under the bus, but we've also mentioned what we're going to get Dale for her birthday. I mean, how she cares for her plants, hopefully, is not throwing anybody under the bus. We live a very gentle life, if that's... It's true. ...our version of outing her, how she cares for her soil. Dale does a great job of 
of being a mom and being a plant mom. <laughs> yeah. She really takes care. Like, I often go to her for plant advice, mm -hmm. and she'll often be like, oh, I repotted these. Like, you had a string of pearls. N not a string of pearls, but the plant that's known as string of pearls. I also have many strings of pearls. And both the plant and the actual jewelry you have to really take care of. It's true. Uh, and I do take care of my jewelry, string of pearls. I never wear perfume with them because it's said to erode the the outer layer of the mm -hmm. pearl. But the string of pearls plan I had less luck with. We ha we don't have so much light in this house. I know we don't. We have we're a townhouse, so there's none no windows on the side. And then the windows in the front are back. We have quite a shady back. We're lucky. In the summer it's nice to have all that shade, mm -hmm. but it does it it does mean that we don't get a ton of light. We need low light plants, generally speaking. It's true. It is what it is. Let me ask you this. What do you like about pearls that you wear versus the pearl plant, which the string of pearls, which we had I should just finish that part of the story. We sure. had a plant of string of pearls and we gave the smallest little bit to Dale. Mm -hmm. And then one our, little ratty strand. Like so small you wouldn't even it almost seems like if if you'd sneeze, you would lose the plant. Like it was so oh, small. Oh yeah, just something you'd sweep up, really. And she grew it into this nest of yeah, plant. It was doing. So, she does really well. And ours didn't make it. Oh no. And then yeah. she gave us some of the cutting that is now a huge plant for her to us, and now we're growing it. Are we? Where yeah, it's it? there. It's underneath one of this one of the um, I haven't really Z looked plants. at our plants in a while. Our Z plants do well. Our Z plants love it here. We've talked about them, I think. On the podcast so, before. So let me ask you about pearls. Yes. Th that you wear. Yes. Tell me about what you like about them, when you wear them, how to take care of them. Pearls have gone through quite an evolution, right? Back in the 50s, the pearl was a really precious gem. 50s, 60s, 70s, sure. you know? And I'm not exactly sure what happened, but they definitely went through a phase where they became really common. Almost an anti-Renaissance. Like it used to be that a cultured pearl was very expensive and sought after, and a freshwater pearl, so those irregular, back in the day they were like kind of long and skinny. Now they look a bit different. Jaggedy and, yeah. and fun looking. With ridges on them. I remember buying a pearl um, bracelet for a girl for her 16th birthday. Oh, tell well, us she about had a, She had a sweet 16. Oh, and you bought her a pearl. And was it freshwater? Or? Freshwater, yeah. Yeah. So those were, so how much was it? Do you remember? 16 bucks, I think. Yeah. So freshwater pearls were considered the, they were real pearls, but they weren't the same as cultured pearls. But also, no, how awesome is it that I'm getting someone a freshwater? You were a nice boyfriend or friend. I don't know the story there. But no, no. She was just a friend. Well, that's still very nice. Mm -hmm. Um and then something happened. I'm not sure. Maybe 10, 20 years ago. I don't know if there was some revolution in pearl farming, but culture pearls became easy to get, commonplace. The price went down. You could still pay a lot of money for them, but you certainly could have access to these beautiful, real, perfect pearls. Um, and then they started selling pearls that were sort of half-baked, if you will. So I have a necklace that has that. They were very easy to get in, like, you could even buy Wait them. Wait a minute. Like, What's a half-baked pearl? I'm explaining. For, okay, okay. I'm explaining, explaining. So it's the shell, mm -hmm. and you can see the pearls that started to form but never fully took off. I see. So they've put, I don't know if it's plastic or what they've put there. I think it is plastic that they put there, and then the pearl forms around it. Oh, they, in the shell. I think that's part of why that's pearls right. have become more inex inexpensive because now they're using little beads that they put in the right. oyster that the pearl forms around the beads so it doesn't take as long to create a pearl as it I did back see. in the 50s. Yeah, Because it used to be the whole thing was a grit of sand. Right. right. And then it becomes takes the grit of <laughs> sand and forms the pearl around it. So now the freshwater and the ones that are ridgy and so on those are more sought after, and those are more expensive now. So I'm not then exactly... The, then the cultured. Yeah, then those perfect cultured ones, but maybe that's why. I don't know. But the ones I have are mostly those cultured ones. And how do you wear them? When do you wear them? What is your practice I with them? I wear them when I want to look 
it's interesting because you'd think I'd wear them. I mean, they kind of have that reputation of tea parties and 1960s, you know, woman with her white gloves and sundress or whatever. But um, for me, I actually like them when I'm wearing a suit. I think they look polished and, prof- <laughs> excuse the pun, polished and professional. Sure. And I think they have they have an effect that you wouldn't necessarily expect, but they kind of pull it all together in a way that I like, even more than like gold jewelry or silver jewelry. So that's when I wear them. So I have dark gray, light gray, and sort of a golden color, and then white as well. The white, actually, I wear the least. And the dark gray, I probably wear the most. Aren't the white actually shells that have been formed into pearls? The ones that I have... Mm -hmm. I think I I have both. Okay. I have ones that I inherited from the 50s. I never wear them. They're too precious, I think. But the, which I should, I know. But um, the ones I more often wear are conch shells. I bought them in the Bahamas. Right. And so what I like about them, because they're not a pearl at all, they're actually conch shells made to look like pearls. When you look closely, they're white, but when you look closely, there's a pink kind of veining Sure. In it that you would see in a conch shell or conch, depending on how you want to say it. But, um, yeah, so that's what I like about those. There's just that slight pink irregularity that I think is really interesting. Cool. Cool. Yeah. And they're still all natural and interesting. And I remember when I bought them in the Bahamas and have a nice memory attached. I've had them for a very long time. There you go. I remember buying pearls. One year we were in Florida and... We went to a store that we always go to, Steinmart, I think it was, mm-hmm. and they had pearls for pearl necklaces with earrings, matching earrings, for $20. Yeah, that was insane. I think that's when I I, I went a little pearl crazy and bought them for people for, for Christmas. Those were and, our, pearl, our pearl times. Yeah, so, well, there you have it. Pearls and pineapples was this episode, Amanda. That's fun, and, and we had no idea. I think we had thought we'd talk about something else yeah because you're you're going away next week i am and do you want to tell our listeners what you're doing uh sure i'm the crake uh grad in residence um which is a fellowship or residency program at mount allison university so i'll be out there next week I'll that's be, your old alma, alma that's mater. my alma mater i'm an alumna of mount allison and uh so i'm going to be particularly visiting the uh drama, English and drama, but more drama departments, and talking about my last 20 years and my experience as an actor and working on set, and um, they want to get, uh, one of the classes I'm, I'll am i be lecturing in is from page to screen, Ooh. there's some acting classes, I'm giving a talk next week, how I got there from here, that was, that's what uh, the name of it is, and every year they have someone else come and give that a talk with that title. I just want to say I didn't make up that title. That's wonderful. And so that university is in New Brunswick. It is, yeah. And I'll be doing a lecture on the other side of our nation. Oh, you are? Yeah, I'll be oh. I'll be doing a online uh, lecture or workshop mm-hmm. uh, at Simon Fraser University Amazing. in British Columbia Amazing. while you're doing your lectures in person in New Brunswick. Amazing. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah. What a lovely, what a lovely... And then we'll meet back up on the Friday. And we certainly will. Mm -hmm. And until next time, we hope you were able to listen to this episode, enjoy it, but not too much that it didn't help you find sleep. And if you have any pearl or... Pineapple. Or plant knowledge you want to share with us, of course, you can follow us on our social media at... The Insomnia Project on all social media and let us know. Until next time, have a good one.